do the sex. Hi, this is Annette Benedetti, your hostess for Locker Room Talk and Shots, the podcast that likes to think of itself as the queer NPR of raunchy women's sex talk. You are about to sit in on the kind of conversations women have on their girls' nights out or behind closed doors while enjoying delicious drinks and dishing about sex. Think fun, honest, and feminist as fuck, and always with the goal of fighting the patriarchy one female orgasm at a time. Welcome to the locker room. <laughs> Today's locker room talk and shots reboot is one of my faves, of course, and it's super helpful to listeners everywhere who want to please vulva owners or pussies, if you'd rather. It is clit oral sex, what to know when you go down on her. So this is all about pleasing people with vulvas orally. And best of all, the advice is coming from women with vulvas who uh, like to go down on on women. So we are speaking to you from the position of being people who have received and know what it feels like and who also enjoy giving. So enjoy this episode. Know you are getting the best of the best advice and insight and then go forth and pleasure those pussies. Cheers. Today, my guest, who has been on several of my podcasts with me and is returning for this really exciting topic, is Abby. And I will let Abby say hello and introduce, reintroduce herself. Hi, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> it's Abby. <laughs> and you're very excited about talking about... This is great. This is. This is yeah. a, a very important topic, one that you and I have talked about often. And I love the gender inclusivity. Oh, look at me. Yeah. I'm learning and growing. To be clear, we are talking about oral sex that is given to people with pussies. Actually, more technically correct, I believe, people who are vulva owners. And a little fun little fact for listeners, a vulva consists of the outer and inner vaginal lips, the clitoris, the vaginal opening, and the sensitive groove between the clit and the vagina. So if you have or would like to go down on someone who has those body parts, that's what we're going to be talking about. And the drink for the day. Well, folks, Look, I've made a lot of fucking cocktails over the last year, <laughs> so I cannot find a themed cocktail that <laughs> we've clearly already had some. <laughs> <laughs> the giveaway. I cannot find a themed cocktail that really met my needs for this podcast, so I decided to become a little bit of a mixologist myself, and I have created what I'm calling... The Pretty Pussy. The Pretty Pussy is a twist on the wet ass pussy and uh, the pink pussy. It's a locker room talk special. And if you want to po put this podcast on pause and run to your liquor cabinet and um, join in the fun, join in the fun, you can. <laughs> Sorry, the, the locker room talk dogs are. <laughs> hopping around in here. We talked about them last time. But you can go to our website and find the recipe at lockerroomtalkpodcast.com. And I will have that recipe up for you uh, before this airs. That's for sure. So anyways, let's raise our glasses, Abby. Thank you for joining me. Always happy to be here. Let's talk about sex. It's a good drink. You guys will like it. I mean... It's very subtle. So there is just so much to talk about. Where to start, Abby? I wanted to start with sort of how this conversation came about. Yeah. Um, a while back, I wrote an article on SheExplorsLife.com, and it was called Why I Risk Being Risque. It was all about why I 
write about and talk about women's sexuality. And one of the things little factoids I had um, looked up was on the orgasm gap. And it wasn't just between men and women. Um, and I don't have the stats in front of me. I have them loosely remembered mm-hmm. uh, because, um, because I'm not that organized folks. <laughs> but the point being is heterosexual men ha- had the highest rate of orgasm. It was in the 80 percentile. And then right below that, bisexual men had the highest orgasm percentile. And then right below that, so all within, I believe, the 80% range of success, meaning they get to have orgasms, was lesbians. Mm -hmm. Now, lesbians don't only have oral sex, guys. I know that a lot of people out there seem to have this idea that that's the kind of sex lesbians have. They just eat each other out. That is not true. (laughs) There is penetration. There are toys. There's lots of other things that happen. However, to be fair, a lot of oral sex does tend to happen in lesbian sex. Now, interestingly enough, the gap occurs when you turn your sights on poor heterosexual women. It drops to a 60, something in the 60% range. Uh, again, you can go to She Explorer's Life if you want to actually see the stats. Um, and then right below that, the cohort of humans that have the least number of orgasms was, was uh, bisexual women. I tell you all of this because I would say when I think of oral sex with women or men, I assume the best oral sex would be received by other women and or other vagina owners, other vulva owners, vulva, vulva, (laughs) other vulva owners. Yeah. So this is where the topic kind of came up as an idea. And and it it happened, this happened in a conversation between Abby and I, I recently uh, was seeing a lesbian and was (laughs) shocked (laughs) at the oral sex I received. Uh, It was easily one of the least pleasurable experiences I had in the oral sex realm. Um, and I was a little bit shocked by it and it got me to thinking about like oral sex and, and how complex it is with, for, for vulva, vulva, vulva. Oh my God. Vulva I'm owners. Just, like have a cheers People with to, vulvas. to the word vulva. Cause it's yes, going to be a problem a all one. throughout this recording. It's a big one. Mm. Yeah, because you do expect. I think there's a lot of expectations. Because there's a lot going on down there. Yeah. And you don't ever really consider that somebody may not know what they're doing. Um, Especially if they have. When it's a woman. Right. You slept with women. I sleep with men and women. Mm -hmm. And so I'm bisexual. This has been mentioned in the past. Both Abby and I identify as bisexual. So we have both (coughs) received and given. Mm -hmm. I'm making an assumption, Abby. Have you gone down on a woman? Yeah. Okay. I'm just. But yeah. And then it kind of brings up this conversation of like, okay, we need more communication. But in your case with your ex-girlfriend, she was like not open to communication, which kind of like made it that much more worse. Right. Well, so to be fair, that's not exactly accurate. Like she definitely asked for communication. Um, but I think one of the things that we've talked about in all the podcasts about women's sexuality is how key communication is for good sex. Mm -hmm. And so there's this assumption that communication is just in the moment or even before having conversations, but communication is more complex than that. Um, she asked for communication, but, um, I, the way, the best way to explain this is when I was much, much younger, I had one, probably many, but one specific boyfriend who, uh, when I'd have sex with him, if I didn't have an orgasm, I had to endure hours, sometimes days of like 
whining and like, why didn't you come? You don't like having sex with me. Something's wrong with me. Is my dick too small? And an, an effort to avoid that conversation, which ruined the enjoyment I was getting out of sex. I learned to fake an orgasm. Yeah. So it wasn't that she, she wanted communication, but in our particular relationship, it was very, um, she was prone to be upset very easily about things that I could not comprehend. Not super receptive. So I assumed saying, what the fuck are you doing now? <laughs> like, what is that? When she was having oral sex with me would, would start a whole slew of like new problems that we had to work through. And I just, you would know. you say, what the fuck are you doing? Or would you say, dude, you know, I can you go to the left? Can you go to the right? Can you do a little circle? Can you do a little figure eight? Like, were you being like constructive with your criticism or just like give, critical? I didn't give her <clears throat> any criticism because there was this fear that if I started to because direct her experience, well, and because my experiences with her, like little, little comments seem to have big impacts. So communication right. is so much more complicated than just, yeah, I That's mean, true. Yeah. most of the time you would think you could just say th those things, which we'll get to mm -hmm. because all of those things she mentioned are techniques you could use, <laughs> but communication is such, you know, like ultimately what we will, I think any conversation around oral sex or sex comes down to communication. Mm -hmm. But the reality is communication is never what in relationships, a one night stand, I would just be like, what are you doing? I would like give very, I mean, if I, if I'm only going to be with someone for, you know, whatever, a handful of hours, I would not bother worrying. It's a little about. bit more direct. Yeah. Yeah. You just say, Hey, yeah. <laughs> like I'm here to get something out of this in a relationship though. It goes Complex. beyond, um, that sexual moment. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to deal with them after. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah. Anyways. So we decided let's talk about clitoral sex. Abby, Abby, where should we start? Where do we even start? Um, there's so many places to start. I guess what I will say is that it goes both ways, right? Like, well, what I'll say is I've felt confident about my dick sucking skills. And there is, there is always this assumption as you sort of like come into your sexuality that there's just like a one size fits all sort of approach. And I remember getting feedback early on and kind of realizing, oh, like one size doesn't fit all because there's these generalizations that get kind of like tossed around in, you know, sexual conversation. So wait, when, when you were dick sucking. Yeah. One and size this is kind of just, this is kind of just a right. jump off to the, to the larger topic. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's these generalizations that go around of like, you know, never use teeth or, you know, you need to go fast or like you need to go like put the whole dick in your mouth. And so you kind of hold on to those kind of generalizations and assumptions when you're young and you're starting out. And then you realize pretty quickly that like not everybody likes that. Some people do like a little bit of teeth and some people. This is very true. And some people do like a, it slower and some people don't like you to go all the way down. Um, some people like you to like focus just on the head. Um, and some people don't. I, I feel confident in your dick sucking skills now. <laughs> <laughs> but part of it is like, you can't, you may have techniques in the, in your back pocket, but those techniques don't really mean anything until you hear what that person really needs, right. you know, from, from their mouth. And so to your point around like communication, it's, an equal exchange. You know, you need to be able to be somebody who says, this is the kind of thing that I like and can you do it? And right. for me, I think it's more beneficial to be in both, you know, talk about your preferences and what really gets you off before you have sex. And I think that that can be part of like the foreplay period. Right. Cause as we know, foreplay isn't just like, oral sex and right. finger banging or whatever you want to call it. Although those are great. Those are great. 
but it's also like the communication, the sort of, you know, slow build. Yeah. And, um, also communication during sex. So like while you're in the act and being able to both direct in a sexy way and a like under, you know, loving, compassionate way, but also right. like receive the feedback in like a really open way. And I think that that's really the foundation of any good sexual experience. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we can go into specifics, but I feel like one yeah. thing we were talking about when we were preparing for this podcast was like every person has a different body. One part of good oral sex for people who have vulvas and vaginas is – to have your partner understand anatomy and you, the anatomy of a vulva and vagina and kind of like how generally it works. So to your point of like lesbians and bisexual women, like, or people who have vaginas, like giving oral sex to somebody else who has a vagina really is true to a certain degree. You know, they kind of understand intuitively, like, right. what that's going to feel like. But that only goes so far to a certain degree because each person is so different in what they want and need. Because, you know, some people really want you to focus on the clit. And they want you to, like, have, like, a certain type of pressure. And they want you to uh, repeat the movements in a sort of consistent pattern. Well, that is something we should talk about. Yeah. Um, after we drink more. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Um, so communication, key. Understanding the anatomy. So it's, it's interesting to me also. I want to rewind a little bit. You mentioned that you were confident in your dick sucking skills. I, on the other hand, am the off opposite. I was just talking to uh, my partner the other day uh, who happens to own a dick <laughs> <laughs> uh, or have a dick. Um, <clears throat> and I said, like, I have never felt confident in my dick sucking skills. I, I think also and this this is going to sound kind of rude. There was part of me that even though I was like, I have no idea how this feels to you. I do not have a cock. I don't like in my cock sucking experience, <laughs> men seem to kind of all just have the same. I mean, same. They seem generally happy if you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, every once in a while I'll, I'll get a direction like, Oh, keep doing that or, or go deeper or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but generally they're just kind of pleased if you're doing it. That's been my experience. Um, however, when it comes to going down on women, I have always felt pretty confident. Not that I think part of it was because I am, I'm pretty familiar with the anatomy, I think also knowing what I like, but more than that, I feel like a big part of making sure that you're pleasing a woman is paying attention to how their body reacts to whatever touch you're doing. There are a lot of things that happen, well, like sounds obviously and body movements, but then once you actually, if, if your fingers are inserted inside a woman while you are going down on them, their body will change their, you know, that parts of them will swell or start to get wet when something really excites them. Mm -hmm. There are a whole bunch of signs you can look for. And it's something that I just feel naturally in tune to. I do not like guys, like generally, I just don't feel like I'm reading, I'm, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think there's an intuitive nature to sex always. Yeah. Maybe I just feel like my intuition is better when it comes to women, women's bodies and reaction. Um, though that's not true. I have definitely had, had a complaint or two about my cock sucking skills. I, I might've accidentally bit down once or twice. Yeah. And caused damage on accident. Because you're having 
Well, I mean, my experience has been that I had a lot of fun and I was kind of getting too into it. <laughs> and you. And that's the thing is like those things happen, right? And it's Accidents like a learning, happen. it's a learning uh, curve. But there has been situations where it's just vastly different from dick to dick <laughs> and <laughs> pussy to pussy, right? It, it, it is. Yes. I mean, there's like a sort of category over here of you know, the vulva and sort of like we just, the options. Can we just cheers to the difference between dick to dick? <laughs> dick, to dick. <laughs> the picture in my head is. But, it, you know, there's this sort of like group of uh, actions over here with like vulvas and group of actions over here with a dick. Yeah. and But within that, there's more variety almost. Right. Within the category, dick yeah. versus vulva, than there is between, I would say. Um, so, you know, you kind of just can't always assume that, you know, the, the partner that you're with is going to like whatever is like shown on TV or, or what, what your last partner liked. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Maybe that's part of exactly. it. Like, because you do, like, typically take like whatever was a hit mm-hmm. with your last partner and you're like i've got this great trick i'm bringing <laughs> to the table and that makes <laughs> sense though of course and there's nothing like i've been ca- i have muscle memory <laughs> in this regard <laughs> right. exactly and then this um, thing worked yeah but then you kind of have to be open to constructive criticism right. and at the same time even if you're open to the constructive criticism, you may be with a partner who's not like confident enough to like express themselves and their wants and needs. Yeah. And that's a whole other bag of chips. Yeah. That's a whole other bag. You right. Know, that needs to be opened and explored. All right. So I want to ask you this. Mm-hmm. When it comes to going down on a woman giving oral sex to a a vulva owner. Vulva owner. What is your go-to move? Like you got a new vulva in front of you. <laughs> it's been a little while since you've been around a vulva, but you remember this one thing that tends to work across the board. What is it? Well, I'm, I genuinely, my only go-to move across the board is like slowly moving down. Mm. So like kissing the mouth and then kind of like kissing or like licking Making down a little love trail. Exactly. Um, so that's like literally my only go-to move. And then when I'm down there, I might use a thumb or like lick a little bit, but then I'll say like, what do you like? And depending on how they answer, if they're direct or if they say like, or if they're like, whatever, you know, if they're shy generally versus like direct generally, it'll kind of determine which way I go. So if somebody's a little shy, I will try things and and then just like check in and be like, do you like this? Does this feel good? Do you want me to go harder? Do you want me to go softer? Do you like fingers? Do you Mm -hmm. like, you know, so there's a lot of me doing the work for them, honestly. Right. Um, But other people who are more direct, um, it's easy because I'm just like, cool, I will do that. Right. You know? Um, so yeah, I genuinely don't really have like a go-to move other than kind of trying to navigate like what they're interested in. Cause there's right. been, there's some people who really like a fast tongue flick on the clit right? and other people who like you to really like switch it up and use hands at the same time as tongue and like move, absolutely <laughs> move things around <laughs> and kind of talk to them. Um, like, you really just kind of have to have fun with it and yeah. not be so because in your head. pussies are fun. Yeah. It's not hard. Exactly. <laughs> so I think it's more of just kind of, like, enjoying, you know, kind of like John Mayer said, your body is a wonderland. Uh-huh. Like, it really is just sort of, like, an enjoyable experience where you get to kind of play and um, check in and, like, laugh and be giggly and, like, silly and tender and really like honoring their body and the connection that you have. And so when you were talking about the intuitive nature of like sex earlier, I feel like that that's something that sort of comes a little bit more naturally, generally speaking with women, because, um, 
we're socialized in that way. Yeah. The, and so <clears throat> for sure, I think we're socialized to be more intimate and even with each other in a heterosexual sense, women hug each other, yeah. and hold hands and like, you know what I mean? We're yeah. very affectionate. Yeah. Um, empathic and tuned in and really like paying attention to the body language that you were mentioning before around like how their body's moving. Are they pushing towards you more? Are they like closing up? Um, or is their body like swelled? Are they, right. are their nipples hard? Like, are they watching you or are they closing their eyes? And obviously that's dependent, but it's really about learning somebody as you go and right. being open to, you know, being responsive and them being responsive to you and just like sort of not putting so much pressure on the skill based right. aspect. And while we're talking about, I mean, so far our conversation has really been about women giving women oral sex. This is all, all of this stuff applies to male partners or penis owners mm -hmm, going mm -hmm. <clears throat> down on vulva owners as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it applies across the board. And I think for me, like at one of the biggest things that I've realized across my dating life and having sex with both men and women in and out of relationships is that, um, yeah, receiving really good oral sex is not necessarily something that comes more naturally to vulva owners than penis owners. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the best, some of the best oral sex I've received has actually been with, with men from men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mine, mine fucking blown. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. It blew my mind. This mm -hmm. little factoid blows my mind. Mm -hmm. And I think chemistry plays a major role into that. For and sure. like, the emotional safety that you have with that person. So for sure from person to person, how open that you feel like you can be, um, to receive whatever's being given to you. Sometimes quote unquote vanilla sex can be mind blowing. If mm -hmm. somebody really makes you feel safe and able to just like release all of whatever it is that, you bring to the table when you're not in that space of playfulness and eroticism Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Hey, vanilla friends. We are raising a cup to your <laughs> vanilla sex and validating that vanilla sex can be mind blowing too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, um, I think if we want to critique some of like, the specific details of oral sex, like for our purposes as bisexual women. And I don't know if you identify as bi, like just for like cis men and women, but like I would say mm -hmm. I identify as bi sort of like along the pan yeah, sexual continuum or spectrum, mm -hmm. however you want to define it. So I think the biggest thing for me is somebody who's not like confident in like hearing constructive criticism and like really struggles to be playful in bed. Um, God, it's such a, such a click killer. Yeah. yeah. Clitoris will like run right back up in my body. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't need to be something that we hold on to. Right. We don't need to be like, I, I think, Sex is such a vulnerable space and it's so easy to go to be triggered in that space and to go back to our younger selves of 14, 15, 16 when we quote unquote lost our virginity mm -hmm. and we're so wrapped up in like, am I doing this right? Am I right? You know, the shame stuff comes right, up for sure. And so if both of you can hold space for like playfulness and silliness and like constructive criticism, that just like you're starting off in like a really good place. Right. I feel like I want to move on to talking about, and we can both take turns with this. What do you like when someone heads south? Mm hmm. What's your, <laughs> what are you hoping happens? I honestly don't really like it when people try to like slow build. Mm -hmm. Um, not that I don't like foreplay. I think the foreplay that I like is not a physical foreplay. It's like a mental, emotional foreplay. 
eyeing me all night, like really like attentive, um, not necessarily calling me beautiful, but just like talking to me about what they want to do to me. So like turning me on in my brain. Right. Um, and just that kind of like, um, just the anticipation around right. like well, what you're sex saying talk. Like it's, it's like sex talk. It's, I like the audacity of it and the taboo nature of, you know, whispering in my ear when we're out like at a restaurant or a bar together. Yeah. And you're talking to me about what you want to do, but you're not like hurried to leave either. You really, that's the slow build that I'm into. Right. And then, um, when we, get to a space where we can have sex i don't want you to like kiss me all the way down or which is wait wait wait. that's what you do though Mm -hmm. you do the kiss all the way down but you don't like the kiss all the way down no i like it when somebody just goes for it yeah me too and um i like it when they yeah they use hands and and mouth at the same time definitely but not like fingering me oh um, I, like I don't that. need you to like, that's not what I mean. I want you to like explore with your hands and like hmm. look at it and like rub it with your fingers and also use tongue and back huh. and forth and back and forth and so, in you, and out. But you like a lot of stimulation, essentially. Yeah, but yeah. Um, and I'm not somebody who's like super sensitive in the sense you can't go back for more immediately. But I do like um, repetitive, like kind of staying in the same rhythm mm-hmm. until I come. It's also very easy for me to come, like both <laughs> internal stimulation and externally. I hate you. <laughs> I can have multiple orgasms and it's not hard. You can be a pretty like bad lover <laughs> and I can <laughs> come pretty quickly. Oh, that that is... So. Wow. But I'm not saying that I don't like I'm, I'm literally speechless. Like that's I'm not be saying I don't nice. like uh, you know, to be finger fucked or whatever. It's just like don't put it in right away because it's not welcoming you. Yeah. Right. I mean I think it takes takes a minute you to can want tell. To. Well, you should be able to tell. Right. When I'm like moving my body towards you or I'm literally taking your hand and putting it inside of me. Right. You know that it's time, but don't like put your mouth over my clit and then shove your fingers in my vagina. Right. Right. Like it's cold and not ready. I mean, nobody, nobody wants that. No. So that would be a faux pas for me. (laughs) Yeah. Um, that's interesting. I, I like, I like the, the idea of using hands and tongue externally at the same time. I don't think that's something that's happened often in my experience, but it's a, I definitely need, so I'll never forget. I was in college one year, who knows? I was dating this guy who happened to live here in Portland. I did not. And he went down on me for the first time and he was looking all around, like on my lips and around them but never getting to the clit. And like, I would even like shift my hips to like put my clit and he would move. And I was like, did he not know? I was so, did he not know where it was? Well, I, that's what I thought at first. Yeah. And then finally I was like, you know, my clit's right here. And he, so he had been with a woman whose uh, clit was so sensitive. She did not like him. Like, licking it at all. So he thought that was a no, no. I am the opposite. Like I need a lot of stimulation. I need a lot of stimulation on the clip and just in general, um, to get me to where I need to be to have an orgasm. Um, and I was just kind of blown away at, oh, I was very young at the time. And it was my first conversation with with a partner who had said that I didn't realize that some women cannot handle clitoral stimulation. Like it's actually painful to them. Um, so I think that's kind of one of the most important things to find out right out the gate. Like, how do you feel about clitoral stimulation? Yeah. Cause apparently, and I don't know what the, 
percentages, but it can't be that high, right? Um, I, I think it's hard to say because I think you probably need more clitoral stimulation than I do. I need a lot. Like I'm somewhere in the middle. And then also like too much wetness is too much wetness. Mm. I have, but some people are like fucking like pour the KY jelly on me, you know, like, right, no. and I'm like, I can't really feel it when you do that. There needs right. to be more friction. And so like always have a towel around and be comfortable to like do the practical aspects of sex. Right. Um, right. And wipe her away or let me, you know. Um, <laughs> Hold on. Just let me mop it up down there a little bit. Well, yeah, but that's, that's part of the fun of it is like being playful and like fumbling and like having an experience with somebody that isn't all about, um, um, sensuality, you know, well, maybe that's the wrong word, but like, I feel like eroticism is being able to throw, throw your inhibitions to the wind and not just, and not trying to be like a Victoria's Secret model arching right. your back in some way and just like looking sexy, looking whatever is deemed sexy, but like really, truly living in the sexiness that is like your experience. And right, right. Being I, open enough to have that experience with someone else. I have to say, like, one of the things I do find very frustrating is, is, is when people get into the like, I'm not into the slow, like, like slowly getting down there. Like when I'm ready to have someone go down on me, I'm like, I want them down there. Um, I'm not into the kissing, like the inner thighs and like, like yeah. trying to like that. It's <laughs> annoying. I'm just like, get, get there. Like, yeah. It's annoying. Uh, and I know that, <laughs> that, I, that must've been something at some point in time that was sort of a thing. Because it happens so often. I think it's something we see in the movies, right? Yeah. And when I was speaking earlier about that, I am not somebody who's like kissing around the thighs or whatever. It's more of just like a, yeah, I don't know why I do it. It's just kind of like from making out to kissing. I I think that that's, I think that's, that's okay. But it's not like a, like, let me play around your thighs and pretend like I'm like, I will say that I have had women tell me, um, that they hate it when people go straight for the vagina. Yeah. So I think, do. I think that's a safe approach. I think it's a safe approach to go from kissing to like kissing the lips to the like chest. Also, then you get some time with boobs. And some like, people hate boob. it. By and the they'll way, tell you that. Well, maybe my partner, my last female partner, she, I like, I'm really into tits. Mm hmm. But I don't like it when people suck my nipples at all. At all? I fucking hate that shit. Unless I'm already turned on, like, all the way turned on, and you're going down on me or you're fucking me, and then I bring your hands to my tits, don't touch them. Wow. It annoys me. Do you tell people that? Yeah, I do. That's something you really got to say. My partners know. Way um, before, way before, do, is that something like you're going, you go into a sexual? Well, no, you're like not always. Lay off the boobs. Sometimes, like they already they go through with it, and then I have to be like, "Hey, stop!" Or after the fact, I'll say, "Hey, stop!" And that was the case with my last female partner. I was like really into her nipples, and she was like, "I'm actually not into that at all." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." You know, it, it's mm-hmm. not like it doesn't ruin my experience. Like, oh, bummer. Like, now I don't have this like part of me that I get to like, you know, it's just like, that's who you are. We can still fuck and it's fine. Right. Um, I think, but yeah, I was also, I was someone who like, I didn't care if someone was into boob play, but I didn't get anything out of it when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But in the last couple of years, I've been really into having my nipples played with and sucked on. I'm mm-hmm. like, what is that? Like, out of the blue, that just changed for me. Mm-hmm. And then something else that really has to do with clitoral sex, which is what we're talking about. I have recently come to realize, and this is actually in the last couple of months, um, I am blessed, blessed with a partner who loves to spend a long time 
down there. And so I've gotten a lot of time to kind of explore instead of just like being like, okay, my partner's gone down and I, I take a long time to orgasm. So instead of feeling stressed about, okay, now he's going down. I need to come soon. Think dirty fucking thoughts, Matt. Think your dirtiest fucking thought. (laughs) I'm able to just kind of like relax and receive pleasure and like feel it. And, um, and I have realized that once my body is excited and someone's going down on me, if you start to touch anywhere else, like from on my stomach to my breasts, um, or even just around like, um, where the hair should be, but is not currently, mm-hmm. um, pelvic bone, pelvic bone. Yeah. Very scientific of you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I get super fucking turned on. Like that heightens my suddenly whatever level of excited I am, like amplifies, amplify and can like almost bring me to an orgasm. Anything can once you're at that place. Right. Like, yeah, I don't know. I've never, this was a new thing because okay. I had realized that most of the time when people went down on me, I felt stressed because I knew it was going to take a while. And I know from going down on someone who takes a while, there's only so long <laughs> you can hang in there for. Um, if you're thinking about it like that, and it sounds like you've been sort of like conditioned. Well, I'm thinking about going down on men. Like I can only like suck your cock for so long and then I get locked jaw and it's not very fun. Yeah. And I mean, that's people's prerogative. They get to be like, I'm done with this. Even right. Though maybe you're not. I'm done. So we need right. to move on to something Which I else. am very empathetic towards. But uh, like, again, uh, when you find like some people, like I can go down on someone forever, like a woman forever. I love, I love giving oral sex to a woman and, and to men as well. Um, for sure. That's not what we're talking about, but uh, I can go down for quite, quite a while. Um, that's just a newer opportunity where I've really gotten to explore receiving the sensation. Yeah. That's awesome. And it feels real fucking good. It's so good. So, Hey, it's time for a drink. Not because we haven't been drinking this whole time. We, can... <laughs> we need to acknowledge there are different ways to approach giving oral sex. Mm-hmm. You can go in for the kill. Mm-hmm. You go down, you get to work. You um, <laughs> put your tongue on the clit. You put your mouth down there. You get going. Mm-hmm. Um, you had brought up earlier in the podcast about making circles with your tongue or figure eights. Let's, let's talk about that. I thought that was, I thought that was very, you know, specific yeah. of you. So we should talk There's about There's different it. things that you can do. I mean, obviously different patterns. I think circular is good because you're not focusing on the center of the clit, which is like literally the most sensitive right. for most people. Um, and so if you go around, it's kind of like, creating a generalized sensation um and like a figure eight does something similar (sighs) i also think it's smart to kind of think about the clit as like a small penis because that's sort of what it is um and you can like suck it, suck it the I way that you right. suck it. I'm, I'm going to put in a vote for sucking <laughs> on the clit. I think very few people realize that's like a, a, a technique. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's fucking amazing. Yeah. You can suck it. You can even like rub your lips over the top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, what else can you do? You can like, do like hard tongue you can do slow tongue depending on what your like you know abilities are with your tongue you can sort of make like a little like blanket over it you can move back and forth between two different techniques so sucking it and like licking it your hands involved yeah yeah you can like put your mouth over it and then have your like fingers going inside your mouth on top of it like Wow. There's Happy a lot of life. things that you can do. <laughs> I think do. that's a new t- – there you go, There's folks. There's a lot of things you can do. <laughs> so um, I think I think that you might need to, like, write up a list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm an amateur. You can also, like, use your fingers and, like, have it in between your two fingers and go up and down. Wait, what? Like, the clit is in between 
Oh, you put your two your fingers, two fingers around, are around it yeah. and you go up and down and then have your tongue on top of it. Wow. Um, you can pinch it. You can like, um, kind of like jack it off with your fingers. You can. I don't know that I've ever had that happen. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Just, you know, having fun. And also it's not, while you're willing to be experimental, you also need to be willing to get feedback. So oftentimes people will like, who don't really know like what they're into, or even if they do know what they're into specifically, they want to like try different things. So they may say, you know, go for it and you can try things. But if your partner's like, okay, that like hurts or that's like not enough pressure or too much pressure, you have to be like resilient and like hear and hear that and be okay and not interpret it as like rejection or one of the other things else. that I think was mentioned in the podcast we did. Um, I think it was what women wish men would stop doing in bed. Someone was like, switch it up, you know, like do one thing for, and then switch it the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. This is a tricky one. First of all, if you're only doing one thing the whole time you go down on someone, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Like nobody. Unless they specifically ask. That's right. I was going to say nobody. I'm sure there are some people that are like, just do this. Generally speaking, though, you'll start to lose sensation uh, if if only one technique is being used. Um, mm -hmm. You got to like switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you switch it up and your partner like reacts negatively, go directly back to whatever you were doing because they were likely close to orgasming. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes I, I've gotten frustrated cause I'm like, Oh, you've been doing that and doing this one, you know, I'm like, I need a new sensation. And, um, mm -hmm. and there are so many different techniques out there mm -hmm. that you can use. Mm -hmm. Um, I also am a big fan of like penetration with fingers. Mm -hmm. Once I'm excited that, especially if you know where a G spot is, if you don't still search it out, search it out while you're down there, you mm -hmm. know, um, or ask your partner, ask your partner, right? Also you can, while orally pleasuring your partner, you can insert a finger in both the vagina and the anus. And the anus. That's, That's right. the best. Like, if someone can get me to the point where they can do that and have all that going on at the same time, that's like... It's really good. That's some good... It's the best. That's some good... Genuinely the best. Yeah. 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 I mean, and that is definitely something you need to get a green light on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, I think a lot of us like to... We like to think of ourselves as like, I'm a good fucking lay. Yeah. I'm a great lay. I'm really good at giving head. And the reality is you might be an amazing lay for someone and the worst lay ever for someone else. And I think like when you start to define yourself that way mm -hmm. and think I've got these moves that work and you just carbon copy them to every partner you have, you're going to be disappointing somebody. But you can also have a growth mindset about it. Like if yeah. you identify as somebody who's a good lay, then you can become an ever better lay right. by being receptive to feedback. Right. And you learning know. new things. Like, so if this is something, this is some way you really, really want to identify, right. then have a growth mindset, you know? Right. A growth mindset. Hey guys, it's not just about business having a growth mindset. Can we just talk about like, here's a cheers to having growth mindset when it comes to being a good lay. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cheers to that. I kind of want to, I need a real refill. I can give you a refill. Do you want some ice? Mm-hmm. I really like this drink. Oops. Oops. Oh, that's oh. water. <laughs> <laughs> I might give that back to you. Here, let me do this. I'll let just me do go this. for this. Do you care if I use my fingers? <laughs> <laughs> you can use your fingers, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love the way you asked for consent there. That is, you know, you just gave our listeners a, a real, taste. a real life example of how to ask for consent. 
Do you mind if I use my fingers? You just use those fingers, just Abby. Put those fingers right put on them there. right on there. Here's to fingers. Oh, here's to fingers. Any last thoughts? I mean, there's we could go on and on talking about oral sex and what needs to happen. Yeah. I would say a great place to start is to have a general understanding of like the anatomy of whatever partner be able to speak directly start like the conversation before you're in the sack and get a sense of like how your partner communicates and like what they're into and then practice like communicating in the sack have resilience when somebody like gives feedback and when you are giving feedback try to give it in a way that's sexy and um experience that moment as a fun place that doesn't have to be like black and white and perfect. Like we can stumble, we can fall, especially if you're like having new partners a lot. Right. So like have a growth mindset about it and then like, yeah, like do some research. But I want to, I want to speak to long-term partners because I am 47 years old and in the last year I've, I've had new experiences from oral sex. I've been like, Oh, how is it that never happened before? How is it I never noticed that before? So I think, you know, like read, re- I don't even know. I don't know no, how it was read, ha- like, yeah. read. like there's read new books about different techniques. Watch YouTube videos. There Ask are people out there. If they're into trying new things. Show them exactly what you're right. thinking. You know, get creative also. Like you don't have to take it from somebody else. Just be like, Hey, what if I do this? Or, you know what? Can I try something new? Or one thing we haven't talked about is like having your partner help, meaning get more hands involved or Mm -hmm. toys and your tongue. We didn't even talk about that. That's one of my new favorite things is like um, inserting like a toy that she loves while you're doing your various techniques. So, so there's a lot going on. Yeah. And and we just brushed upon the butt. Like we just <laughs> brushed upon the butt. <laughs> I mean, oral sex really we 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 are focusing on like the vulva, the clitoris and the vagina, the vaginal opening the inside, but it really is that whole erotic area. There's that there's your butt um your gooch. Your gooch. Wait, wait, what is, is that the, the place between no man's land? Yeah. No man's land. <laughs> the place between the two holes. Uh, it's also erotic for some people. I guess I haven't explored that. I mean, that. the whole entire hip area. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And knowing like the erogenous zones outside of the, uh, the obvious ones, you right. know, and the level of pressure, like if you're like tickling your partner's neck and that's their erogenous zone while you're going down on them, like that's wait, well, how would you do that? You gotta have a long arm. with your hand. I mean, well, you're pretty I'm short. Pretty, I'm like, I don't depends think I can do that. Depends on the partner that. that you're with, but that's just an example. <laughs> right, or if you're right. like sort of like grasping their hips or sure. whatever it is, it's like sure. that, that's something to keep in mind. That general concept. Right. So, I mean, one thing that I would say around like toys is that there's a lot of toys coming out now that are focused on like recreating what it feels like to be gone down on as a person who has a clip. Have you tried them? Yeah. So there's different ones, right? Right. So there's ones that flap. So to um, recreate the The feeling of like up and down and up and down with the tongue, that's kind of hard and sticking out. I'm not really into that. Have you I mean, tried, could the, be have you tried the toy? I have not tried that one. Cause that's not really like the feeling that I like. The feeling that I like is more of like a, uh, encompassing, like pulsating feeling. And right. I have one of those too. So yeah. And there's a lot of other ones that they have too, that are like really cool. Yeah. And it's awesome because, like, we're kind of thinking more along the lines of, like, out of the, no- the like, heteronormative way of, like, fucking. Right. For those that are interested, there's a lot of sex toys that are coming out that aren't just, like, dildos, you know, or vibrators. There's things that are coming out that are really focusing on, like, recreating what it feels like um, to be 
sucked off. <laughs> <sighs> I love that. Here's to being <laughs> sucked off. God damn it. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Something really interesting I did find out in my research because I spent quite a bit of time researching oral sex today. And it was interesting to find out that um, both men and this, and I want to say this is a very heteronormative, like the studies that I was reading was very sort of heteronormative cis Mm -hmm. type studies, Mm -hmm. right? But still, whatever, it gives us some information that men and women equally go down on each other. There was a while back one study out of Canada um, that was kind of claiming that there was what they were calling the oral sex gap, kind of like the orgasm gap, which was it's pretty false, Mm -hmm. um, saying that more women gave oral sex than men. But the reality is what they've found is it, there's a lot of equality in that area. Men do tend to love to go down on women as much as women go down on men, whether they love it or not. (laughs) I mean, I think that's where some of the information came in as like some women were going down on men just because they felt like it was something they had to do. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate because I think it can also be a very fun activity, but that is for a different, I definitely think maybe I should have you back for the, um, I don't know what we'll call it, but, uh, part two cock sucking. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, you just out right out the gate, you had some good input on that. And I think oral sex is a very important part of, I mean, for people that enjoy it, but of a like a robust, rich sex life. Yeah, a varied sex life, for sure. A varied sex life. So, so listeners, if you are interested in finding out more about cock sucking, (laughs) uh, and maybe eventually clit licking, um, you want to stay tuned uh, because I am pretty sure that we will have some episodes coming up about that. Now I do know, in fact, we have future episodes coming up that cover non-monogamy and cover sex and love. I know it sounds a little bit boring, but it's not, it's not, it's a good topic. So stay tuned in the upcoming week for those topics. If you have a topic that you want discussed, um, or you have comments on yeah. this episode, because questions, questions, critiques, or things you want us to address. We'll do a whole additional episode. If you send in questions, then please send them to Annette. That's me. A N N E T T E at she explores life.com. I will get back to you. Um, your questions may show up in our episodes. Um, you have topics you want us to, to make a whole podcast out of, we can do that. Um, you can find us on Facebook at locker room talk and shots podcast. I believe, um, we also have a group, a Facebook group you can join. And here's the cool thing about that. If you join that group, I will let you know what the upcoming podcast is about. I will let you submit questions that I will present during the podcast and we will answer. I will include your comments, you know, if they pass my radar, my (laughs) test for appropriate (laughs) comments. Um, but you'll get a say. There's a pretty wide threshold. I mean, the the threshold's pretty big, right? Uh, So, so get on. If you're on social media, head over there and join our group. Um, it will give you a chance to, to voice, have a voice in this conversation. So, um, I think we're done, huh? (laughs) Look at us. We're not even on our lips. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers to that. <laughs> so until next time, we'll see you in the locker room. <laughs> Ring loop.